Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool. And tonight we are talking all about activities for a bird theme. So like a backyard birds, or maybe you're just learning <laughs> all about birds. Um, that's the activities and the theme we're doing tonight. So in the comments, I want you to tell me, do you do a bird theme? Have you done a bird theme? When do you do it during the year? Is it something new you want to try? Do you mix it in with like camping? Do you do it during Easter time? Tell me all of the things. So at the top of this post, what you will find are links to all the things. So links to my bird science unit and bird um, math and literacy centers is linked up there. And then there's links to anything else you would need like, um, like my Amazon storefront or um, all the things. So yeah, everything is at the top for you guys. So we're gonna just jump right in to a bird theme. Now, manipulatives are kind of tricky. Like I think because it's, I don't think it's a theme a lot of people do. Um, and I've never done one. This would be my first time doing one. I'm not in the classroom this year, but it would be really fun. And all the activities I've made would be, you could have so much fun. And you know, birds are everywhere. They're outside. So here's some ideas I have for you for manipulatives and things. One thing you can do is if you have a window, you can grab one of these. It's a clear like window bird feeder. So it has suction cups with it. So you could suction cup it to like your classroom window and the kids could see the birds as they come eat the bird seed um, right at your classroom. So that was really, that would be a really, really fun idea. It's a fun way to observe birds. Um, so if you have a classroom window, grab one of these on Amazon. I think I got this at like Walmart. So they're at Walmart too. So clear bird feeder for your window. And then manipulative, so you can use all kinds of seeds. These are actually some I have for a plant. When I do plants, it's like pumpkin seeds and beans. So you could use beans. You could use pumpkin seeds if you have them. I also bought some like sunflower seeds. And you'll see I'm using these sunflower seeds as um, manipulatives. They're not like seasoned or anything. They're just like plain seeds. And these are like two for a dollar or two for a dollar oh nine. Um, so it's a lot cheaper than buying like the packets of seeds. So that's an idea for you. There's also this um, commercial um, from Learning Resources. It's birds in a nest. Here are the counters. There's actually, I think, there's more small birds, but I'm, I'm using them for something. Um, so it comes with little nests and then it has little birds. It's linked to my Amazon storefront. I'll drop the link after we're done too. But if you wanted like little bird manipulatives, that's another idea. And then you can also buy like the little bird from Amazon too or Michael's. And then a really fun manipulative would be worms. I showed these last week when we did a plant theme. So these are in like the fishing section at like Walmart. And all you do is they come with these like ugly tails on them. A lot of them do. And I just cut them off. Oh, that one fell off. But yeah, so you just cut them off. And then they look like little worms and they're they're not slimy or sticky but they're squishy so they're so much fun um just make sure you're getting the ones obviously without hooks so so those are some ideas you can use for a bird theme now for music and movement i have a really fun idea so you can make egg shakers i've always had these in my classroom i just take easter eggs put some beans inside <laughs> And um, then you got like little egg shakers. Again, I had a smaller class when I was using this set. So you can have every kid have one egg, two eggs. There's the um, the egg shake it song that is on YouTube that's really fun. It says like shake it high and shake it low. Or you can play songs and you can have everybody give them different positional words. Say, okay, everybody shake your eggs up high, shake them low, shake them behind you, shake them in front of you, shake them in between your legs, shake them to your side, shake them next to, next to, um, I don't know, call something out in your class. I'm like next to the wall, shake them next to a friend, shake them under the table. Um, so you could really have a lot of fun. So these are really fun. And again, you can give everybody one or two. They're fun for dance party Friday. Um, if you do dance parties on Friday, we always did basically play kids bop and do all kinds of fun things. And I always did like a musical instrument or something for one of the songs. These are really fun. And again, 
just go out and grab some plastic eggs and then put beans inside and I just put washi tape on the outside and you got some egg shakers and you can also have them shake to the beat you can have just play a fun song and they can shake them there doesn't have to be any directions with them it can be totally whatever they want to do just dance around with your egg shakers or you can also have them shake to the beat like the tempo have them shake them fast and then shake them slow and shake them medium so that's really fun too so egg shakers so much fun and then you can use them the rest of the year too once you make them Let's talk about um, a fine motor activity. So we all do like the bugs, like bug stuck and I think spiders during like Halloween. So this is just a green basket. I put some little like paper in it and I put some tape on top and you can't see it. Here, I'll get one out. So you have to be a bird and get the worms out. So you can um, kind of like feed the birds or you can have your little beak and they can use the tweezers and they can get the worms out. And again, just put some tape on a basket. This is just some green shredded paper. You could just put like green Easter grass in it too. And my worms are just little um, pipe cleaners that I bent. So those are kind of like all stuck in there. So this would be a really fun, fine motor activity. You could also do it on, let me move these. You can make a big one on like a shallow tray. So you could do it on this too. So that way a couple kids could play it at a time or you can make a couple of these. It's totally up to you. So just put tape over the top, put some Easter grass in the bottom. So that way they kind of have to go around and get them out of the grass, just like the birds do. And then the tweezers, it's like their little beak. Or you could use clothespins. So a really fun, um, fine motor activity for a bird unit. Now I said earlier, um, that I have a book list on my blog, but I have a whole book list for a bird theme, but here are some of my favorites. This one is a bird alphabet um, by Jesse Ford, and it says, it just goes through and it has all different kinds of birds. It is a board book, but um, it's a really, really fun alphabet bird book. They have a whole bunch in the series and they're gorgeous illustrations. This one's by Lizzie Brockwell, a bird is a bird, and it talks about the characteristics of a bird, how they have like feathers, and it talks about their different types of beaks. Um, so this one, a bird is a bird, is really fun. This is my favorite bird book. I love Lucy, um, Lucy, Co is it Co Cousins, Cowkins? I don't know. So, <laughs> um, but it's Hooray for Birds. There's also a, a Hooray for Fish book. And I just love the illustrations because you can tell she painted them. So they can also paint birds just like um, she did in the book, but it has them swooping up and down. It's full of like really great describing words. So like this talks about the wings and how they catch it with their feet. Just really, really great describing words, really gorgeous illustrations. All right, for birds, this one's just called birds. And it describes all the different birds, like what they do. Some birds are very noisy while others sing a sweet song. So talks, it's kind of like an opposites book. Some prefer, what does this one say? This page says, most birds like to build nests from branches. Some prefer a roof over their head. So different types of um, places the birds can live. And then this one, a house for birds. It talks about the little birds and they have to find a home that fits them. So all the little birds, this one's too big, this one's too small, I'm, um, I'm too wide, I, like this one's for um, a smaller bird, taller bird, all the things. So that one's a really fun one. And then this one, tail feather fun, counting by tens, it's really fun. So it says like 100 feathers. So each bird has 10 feathers on them. Now, if I was reading this with my preschool class, this is great for 10 kinder because it counts by tens, but I would say 10 birds. I would just change the words because each time one flies away, so they're counting backwards. They're counting down from 100. So you can count down from 100 or you can be sneaky and change it. I do that all the time sometimes when I'm reading a book. Say we have 10 birds and then there's nine or 90 feathers. Um, so talk about count, counting back from 10, but I love, I love this, um, math book series. It's called, no, it's the know your numbers, um, math series. 
So, again, I have a gigantic bird book list on my blog, Play-Doh Mats. And they're all different birds, and it's kind of like the life cycle of a bird, too. They hatch, there's baby birds, so So, bird Play-Doh mats, so fun. And you can use all the little Play-Doh. I love getting these little guys for um, using like Play-Doh mats, because they're perfect, because you can put out a whole bunch of colors. And if they get mixed up a little bit, it's no big deal. So, another fun fine motor is in this one is actually included in my bird math and literacy centers unit. So what they're going to do is you're going to um, print out these feathers. Some have lines, some do not. So you pick the kind you want to print. And then what the students are going to do is they are going to cut out the feather and then they can cut the sides to make all of the different little parts of the feather. So they can cut around it. And again, you can cut out this round part or they can cut it out. If they cut off the bottom, it's no big deal. Um, and then they can snip all the way down to make all the, the little fringe on the side. And then if your kiddos are struggling, I love bounce back scissors. They bounce back open. So they can use regular scissors or bounce back scissors for this fun cutting activity. So that is in my bird math and literacy centers unit. All right, let's go to art. So this is a fun one. I know a lot of people do love making the little paper plate birds. So I just, um, they tape the feet on. I, I like to use pipe cleaners. And then you can tell I just made this <laughs> right before we were live because it's still wet. I thought I had an example and I, I can't find it. <laughs> um, Shocker, right? I can't find one of the many art projects I have. So basically you cut a paper plate in half. You can use big ones or small ones. Um, and you can let the kids pick. You can put out big plates and small plates or they can make like a mommy bird and a baby bird. And then they paint it. And I always like to put out feathers and sneak in some math. And they have to match the feathers to the bird or they don't have to match them, up to you. And then just some googly eyes and a little beak. And how cute are these little birds? You can also do the paper plate. Um, I know a lot of people do this one where you cut it in half and then they make it into a nest. So they crumble up brown paper or you can use that like paper shredding that I use for um, this, but you get it from in brown and they can glue it onto their nest and then they can um, put some little eggs in it. Some like cut some um, like circles or ovals and put some eggs in it. So. Fun paper plate art for a bird theme. You can also do, hold on, my feather fell out. You can also do owls. So this one is super simple. So you fold the sides in, and then you fold the, the, top, the top half down, and then you just staple it. And then the kids sponge paint all over. And then they can put some eyes and a nose on so you got little owls. So you could have a whole bunch of little birds. You can also have them um, do like parrots and do like lots and lots of bright colors. Um, they can do flamingos so they can have longer legs. Have a whole bunch of different birds in your, for a bird um, bulletin board. That would be really fun. And so bright and colorful too. Now, another fun activity that's much, much more open-ended you can just give them feathers. So instead of having paintbrushes in here, you would have a feather that I can't see where I put it. So I have feathers that I use to paint with. Oh, that's gonna fall. So um, they're like longer and a little bit thicker. They're, oh, I glued them on here. So they're these feathers I typically use to paint with. Also because this is a little bit stronger, because if they're painting with a feather that's like this, it gets like gooped up and it just turns into like a big mess. Whereas if you paint with a feather that has a little, that's a little bit stiffer, it'll kind of work more like a brush. And then if we're painting with some kind of fun tool that I can glue on, I let them glue on a couple. That way their parents know like what kind of what it is they paint it with. And it just adds a little fun texture to the front. So instead of putting paintbrushes in here, put some, put a feather in each paint cup and they can paint with feathers. And then, if they want to go bird watching, or if you want to go outside and go bird watching, they can make some binoculars. 
So these are paper towel tubes and you can cut them in half. These are not cut even, but it's fine. It's just a craft. And then they put some tape around it to tape them together and they tape the twine on and then they can decorate it however they want. Um, you can put out some stickers with some markers and then they can put it around their neck and then you guys can go outside and go on a bird watch. And if you have my science unit, I have a bird hunt um, activity in it. So this has, um, do you see signs or hear birds? Do you see signs oh, or hear birds? So do you see feathers? Do you see tracks? Do you see bird poop? Do you see nests? Do you hear singing? And then here are some backyard birds that are common kind of all over the U.S. So we got owls and cardinals and hummingbirds and um, a goose or a robin or a woodpecker. And that kind of shows what they look like. And then they can find them. So, again, super fun. And if you don't have my, my um, science unit, it's okay. Just go on a bird hunt without it. Then look for birds and have them look up and have them look down. And talk about things that they would look for so they would know that, there were, um, that a bird may have been there. I just gotta get get rid of some some stuff. So I got some room. Okay. So for the sensory table, why not put some bird seed in it? Now, if you can't do bird seed because you have a nut allergy in your classroom, that's okay. Um, because a lot of bird seeds contain um, like if they're made in a plant that contains peanuts, because some bird seeds have actual peanuts in them so be careful with allergies for this but if you can't do birds just do um some rice or you could do like um just all different beans like some black beans and some brown beans and some white beans just all the different kinds of beans because those are um what birds eat, um and seeds too and then i have these two little nests i think i got these at like a craft store maybe the dollar tree i can't remember so i have some little nests in here i have some pipe cleaner worms and then I have a little egg carton. And then I do have some pom-poms. That way, if they want to sort. And I think these are like fall-colored pom-poms. I think. Because they're kind of fall-y. Fall colors. Like a, um, just a little bit darker. But that way, they can sort the pom-poms by color. So they can also pretend they're like eggs in the bird nest. So, very open-ended. I just have some little pine cones in here. Some sticks. And then I put some wooden tools in here. You don't have to have wooden tools in if you don't want to. And they can fill up the egg carton. And then to kind of resemble a bird feeder, I took a paper towel tube and I cut some holes in it. So that way, I'm just gonna hold on. We're just gonna do this fast. <laughs> so they can fill it up and then they can kind of watch it come out of the holes and they can pretend for the little birds to eat on the bird feeder. So. Just a little fun thing to fill and dump. Because I always like to have something to fill and dump in there too. In the um, sensory table too. So, oh, and some feathers. Gotta throw in some feathers. And then, obviously, I have a couple, couple little birdies in there too. Hmm? Oh, and some little tweezers because they can pretend to be a, twe um, a bird and grab <laughs> the worms with their feet. And again, if you don't have tweezers, put in some like regular tweezers, put in some clothespins, whatever you have in your classroom. So much fun. So that is um, a fun um, sensory table for a bird feed. So instead of a Play-Doh, because you Play-Doh tray, because you guys know I love, 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 love my Play-Doh tray. I made kind of a different one. So, so I just have some naturey things. Um, so I have some little piece, I have these in my backyard, so I cut some of those. I got some brown leaves. Oh, I would also have scissors on with this too. Um, and then I have some Play-Doh, just in a bowl, in a baggie. That's usually how I keep my Play-Doh if it's homemade. And then I have some rocks. And what they can do is cut, so we're sneaking in some scissor scales. They can cut all the pieces and they can make a nest. Now, one, they're done. It's all gonna be, they can take it out and kind of put it back. 
Now, this is going to ruin your Play-Doh, so don't plan on keeping this Play-Doh. So if you have some old Play-Doh that you're just, you have in your cabinet and you're probably gonna pitch it soon, put that out <laughs> for this unit. And I just didn't add any food coloring. This is just homemade Play-Doh with no food coloring and they can just push and mold. And again, when they take all this out and put it back on the tray, it's not all gonna come out perfect, but that's okay. And then they'll put it back in here um, and it'll eventually get all, all kinds of nature stuck in it, but that's okay, so much fun. But they can make a nest instead of doing like a, a typical regular Play-Doh tray. So it's really, really fun and it's sneaking in some stem. So yeah, so have them make some nests with Play-Doh trays. Some kids, it's just gonna look like a hodgepodge, like the one I made. Like it's it's just gonna be a blob with stuff. Some kids are gonna roll like a snake or some kids will make it like just the outside. They're all gonna make them different because all bird nests are different, so that's okay. Oh, my other thing I wanted to tell you guys tonight. If you have a real bird's nest that you bring in your classroom, which is awesome, um, make sure you keep it in a baggie because birds are dirty and gross and carry disease. So, in order to keep our kids happy, healthy, and safe, put that bird's nest in a plastic baggie and tape it shut to make sure they can't get it out and they can look at it and investigate it inside the baggie because, again, birds carry disease and it's not safe to have a bird's nest just out in your classroom. You could also put it in like a plastic Tupperware that's like clear and they can look at it through there, but if you put it in a baggie, they could actually kind of touch it still, but there would be that plastic barrier in between. So. So much fun. Okay, so that is the Play-Doh idea for this thing. Also, if you wanted to do another fun sensory thing, um, if you guys watched last week's um, Facebook Live for plants, um, you could do this for birds too. So take these fishing worms that are ooey gooey and make oobleck. So put some brown food coloring um, in the water or um, you can use food color or liquid watercolor, and then just take some cornstarch and water and mix it together, and then put these worms in, and then there's ooey gooey like dirt, and they can use clothespins or their fingers, and they can pick out all the worms, but it would be so, so much fun. So that's another fun sensory idea for you guys too. Let's move on to some literacy, and then we'll do math, and we'll end with science. Okay, I got everything all stacked. Hopefully nothing falls. So, also, I have um, an idea for you guys. So if you wanna make anything into a nest, this is just a tray, and I just took some brown, that butcher paper that, on the big roll. Um, it's, I'd use that because it's thinner thing. Um, like, uh, uh -oh thinner than like construction paper, so it's easier to manipulate, and I did, did have to staple it a little bit, but cover a tray or whatever your activity's on in brown paper, and now you have like a little nest, which is so much fun. So, if you have any bird word cards, these are in my bird math and literacy centers. They all have real photographs, and there's a set of lowercase and a set of uppercase, tons and tons and tons. So, take that and then put out some letter beads and put out some feathers and look you guys they can make the word on the feather by stringing it so they're kind of like stringing the eggs on the feather to make the different words and again i just use these feathers and honestly you guys i just took a whole bunch of my my bag of feathers and i just figured out which one that um I, a bead fit into so that's all i did now do you have to use birds no you could totally have your kiddos make their names on the feathers. That would be really fun. You could just have them string the letter beads on there for a fun, fine motor activity. You could have them also string blue beads on the blue feather and orange beads on the orange feather so they can do some color matching. But look at all this great fine motor. You have to hold it with your pincer, plus pincer grasp, and then you have to string them on, which is a great hand-eye coordination. And then if you want to sneak in some literacy and have them make a name or a word or a sight word maybe, whatever you want to do. That is a fun um, activity for making words or just playing with letter beads. And then, because birds lay eggs, 
You guys know I love my plastic eggs. Love, love, love them. So what you can do is write letters on your plastic eggs, write a number face and a lowercase, and they have to match it. And then put some magnet letters out too in the tray. Now again, I don't have the whole alphabet. I just have it to L because that's all the fit. And they have to match. Here's I. Open. Here's the uppercase I. And they have to match it and put it in the egg. And then they have to put it in the egg carton. Because I put little stickers in the bottom of my egg carton. So much fun. Oh, these square beads. Somebody asked where these square beads are from. These are just from Walmart, I think. 99% sure. These are just like in the Walmart like craft section. So. So that is a really fun activity you can do for letters and birds with the eggs. Also in my math and literacy centers is this really fun name craft. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna cut out their nest and then they're going to tear the, the, um, the paper. Now, if you don't have a lot of brown paper, take some brown shopping bags and tear it, because that's what I did for these because um, I just thought of that and then they tear it. And I always have the strips pre-made. If you teach kindergarten, they probably could tear the strips by themselves. But if you have three-year-olds or four-year-olds or pre-K or um, preschool, they're not gonna be able to tear those strips. So always pre-tear them because this is tricky. And once they get it, you'll be good. But it's a tricky skill. And then give them some round eggs and then they can make their name. So a little Robin's Nest name craft. Another one, we got are these cutie patootie letter cards. So one thing you could do is you could use this as like a letter dot it. So they pick a letter and then dot it on the board or on their page. Or they could trace it. They could also make sight words with them. You could also, and again, you could do this for any bird letter cards you have. Take a vine. These are from the dollar store. And then they can clip them on. They can clip them on in order. They can clip on their name. But now we have the birds sitting in the tree. So, so, so much fun. Okay. All right, so it's another fun activity. Okay, I'm gonna put this one down here. Oh geez. Okay. These don't have paint in them. Well, there is, but it's all dried up. And then this is another um, activity. So, my watch just told me to breathe. <laughs> so funny. So, these little peacock feathers. So, grab these little cards. These are in my bird math and literacy centers. And then what I did was I just took some bomb-bombs that are like peacock colored, and I put all the feathers in here along with some letter manipulatives. Now, I wouldn't put out all the letters. I'd probably just put out, I think I have letters A through H, and I would spread them out over the table. And then they have to match the, um, the uppercase, the lowercase, and then the letter sounds. And then if you want to put a letter manipulative in there, you can. Now again, you just put out some of the letter cards. If you want to make it easier, just put out just the letters. If you want to make it even easier, just put out the uppercase. So again, a, di a ton of different ways to play this game with some letters. And then you can toss them in this little fun sensory bin with the pom -poms. And then my last, well, not last, because I have some butcher paper activities I want to show you too. So this one is a, these are the letter mats. And then I have the printable with it. So what they can do is they can make, they can write the letter with dry erase. Or these are those sunflower seeds. These. They can make, they can trace the word with the dry erase on the bottom and then they can make the letter with the sunflower seeds. Because the birds love to eat the sunflower seeds. And look all that great fine motor they're doing. You could also use Play-Doh, have them real like Play-Doh snakes and they can make the, the letters that way. And then once they make the letter, they can trace it on their letter mat. Oh, I have one more. Sorry, I lied. I have one more literacy activity. Again, this one is in the Bird Math Literacy Centers. So we have some rhyming bird houses, and they are going to find the rhyme. So rock and sock, pan and man. 
So they're gonna put the rhymes in. And again, whatever activity you have, just to make it a little bit more fun, put some bird seed on there and then they can, again, because birds have beaks, put out some tweezers and they can pick it out like a like little bird. And if you don't have tweezers, use clothespins. So much fun. This, a lot of my games too, <laughs> you can make into a file folder game. So um, take your file holder, glue these on the inside, and then put Velcro on these, and then you could have also have a file folder activity. If the file folder activities are more your jam. Now we have the bee, bird, bee, bird peacock letter game. Now it also comes in numbers. It goes up to 20. So I just wanted to show you the two different ones. So it go, you can do numbers one to 10. You could do numbers 10 to 20. Totally up to you. There's a 10 frame, a number, and then a hand. And then there's like the 18. And then if you wanted to, you can also put out some beads and that way they have actually have to count in a manipulative. I love using these silicone cupcake molds because they kind of stick and they don't like wiggle around a lot. But this is just a silicone cupcake mold with some beads and then they can count those out as well. So we have that game. And then another, just, oh, another math game you can play for a bird theme would be to do the same eggs, but for color sorting. So they have to match. I just put some stickers. You can also color in the bottom of these um, with um, marker. And they can just, whoops, I'm losing my eggs. They can match the colors to the egg. So much fun. And you can tell these eggs are all different colors. So you can also sort them by size. So you can just put out like um, three like tubs or just put out like make a mat, like a little um, take, I'll show you in a minute, my feather mat. And then they can also sort the eggs by size because we have small, medium, and large. Perfect. So we have that. Now, you know I love, again, love eggs. I did a, if you, if you love plastic eggs, I did a whole Facebook Live on them too. So, that's also an option. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, oh, these have mini erasers in them. <laughs> I forgot. So, they, I put numbers on all my eggs, and then I put numbers inside my egg carton. And then you can either put out pom-poms or um, these must have it from another activity. Um, <laughs> so take mini erasers out and put those out if you want. And they can count either the mini erasers or the pom-poms, whatever you have out. So that's two. And then you're gonna put that one on the two. And then this one would be three. So they can put in three. One, two, three. And they can close it and then put it on. Now, you can also make this trickier by putting a nine and a nine, and then they would have to match it. Or you can just keep it kind of connected and then have them count out that many objects and put them in the tray. So you do it how it works for you in your classroom. All right, so we also love feathers, right? Feathers are great because you can measure them. So grab some cubes and you can measure the length. If you are measuring the length, why not put them in order? So after you measure them with cubes, have some here. So this one is, or rainbow rulers, whatever you have. This one is, I'm not gonna count. That one is, you know, 12, 12 big. This one, let's get another one. Hold on guys, I have a whole bunch. See? Um, let's see, let's measure this one. This one is four. Oops. This one is four big. And this one is bigger than the pink one, but smaller than the green one. So that way they have to measure them and then they can measure them and then they can put them in order from shortest to tallest on your mat. So that's one way thing you could do with feathers because all birds have feathers. You could also, and I just took, this is like easel paper and I just wrote on it. You can also sort them by color. So we have blue feathers and we have the yellow feathers and we have the orange feathers. Same feathers, different active or different mats. And then you can sort 
sort them by size. This is the mat I was talking about that you could use for the eggs. So do small. I always write it small, medium, and large since, you know, preschoolers can't read or kindergartners probably can't read these words. So they can sort them by small, medium, and large. So much fun. And again, just some feathers. And then what I do is I keep it in the bag so that way I have my feathers that I like to use for these sorting and measuring activities ready to go for whatever theme. That works too for like a pet theme. If you have, pet, you're talking about pet birds, um, tons and tons of themes, chicks. So let me show you some of the math activities in my bird centers. So here's one that you guys went bananas for. And they are little, little, let me find out. Hold on. Here we go. They are number mats, so they go up to 20. So what the kiddos are going to do is they're gonna trace, they're gonna read the number two and they can trace it with a dry erase marker. And then they can count it one, two, and then they have to show it. So I don't have bird, that many bird um, manipulatives. So they can just put the eggs in the nest and these are just little pom-poms. And then here is an example of one of the teen number bird cards. So again, super fun math counting game. We love 10 frames, don't we? And then this is the same activity, but for numbers, the card's a little bit different. And then I did also put at the bottom, I put a 10 frames, so that way they can count how many to check it. So again, they can write it with a dry erase marker, which, here we go. They can write the number, trace it with a dry erase marker. They can also make it with the bird seeds. Again, I just use these bird seeds, not, not seasoned, not salted, just regular sunflower seeds. And these are also good if you have kiddos who eat things because if they accidentally eat a bird seed, it won't hurt them. <laughs> or they can do Play-Doh. Roll a Play-Doh so can make the number and then they can trace it with the dry erase. And then this one has the number map that they can trace with the dry erase marker one through 10 or one through 20. So that way you can um, tailor the activity to fit the needs of your students. All right, I have two more math for you guys. And then I want to show I have butcher activities, butcher paper activities to show you, and then the science center. So, almost done, almost done. So, we got some, these are little shape mats. So, we got all the different nest shapes, and we want to put the eggs and the birds in their nest. So, this is circle birds. We got to put him in his nest, and we have a circle egg. These are just like buttons, and the little shape buttons, and I put, just put them in, and they can use blue ones, you can use white ones, you can cut these out of foam, whatever you wanna do. And then you're just basically matching the birds and um, eggs in their shape nest. And then, last but not least, and there are more centers in my math literacy centers, but if you wanna check that out, you can click the link at the top of the page and go there. So this one is really fun. And you guys, look at this bird. I don't have it taped, I should have taped it. So, we got our little bird, and we need to feed him, and we're making 10. So, there's two mat options. So, this would be a good mat for like preschool or pre-K, because it's just the 10 frame. Now, if you have kindergarten, and you're working on making equations, or making number sentences, that is at the top, so they can make the number sentence and make the total. So, what they're gonna do is pick a card. So, we have seven and three, and you would want them to use the tweezers because, again, birds and their beaks are like a tweezers. And then they can put it in the 10 frame. And I just use the pipe cleaner worms. And then these are pumpkin seeds I have. You can use sunflower seeds. You can use beans, whatever you have. And so they make 10, and then they can double check. And then what they're going to do is they're going to feed the birds. So they're going to put all of it in the little bird. This is just a green cup. So much fun. Isn't that so much fun? Such a fun way to explore um, different ways to make 10. Um, again, the links are all at the top. The link to my all the math and literacy centers I showed you. Those are in my bird math and literacy centers. And then anything science I showed you or I'm going to show you are in my bird science math and literacy centers. And I wanted to remind you guys the bird Science unit also has egg and chick, egg to, or egg to chick activities in it too. So like life cycle of a chicken. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna show you that. And then this is in there.
parts of a robin. All right, so this one, what you're gonna do is take a brown marker. I didn't do all of them, but you would have this whole page full and you do all the nests, A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. And then what the kids are gonna do is match them up with the letters and they would put them in. Now you could also use the beginning sound magnets and put those in there. So that, you could do that. Now, if you have a stuffed animal bird, it'd be really cute to put that guy on the table. If you don't, that's okay too. You can always put little figures out for um, just a little bit of extra fun. And then for this one, we're gonna fly him over here. I'm gonna turn it sideways for a minute. So this one, these are all the different flight paths of a bird. So basically we're tracing different lines. Now you can do this a few different ways. You can have markers on the table without the manipulatives and they can rainbow write. So each kid would pick a different color and he would trace the lines. Or you can have the students use manipulatives and they can trace the lines. Now you can see, you can also do this for patterns. You could also add a dice to this game and they could make. Now, these pom-poms are really small. I'd probably use a bigger manipulative with this or make the lines smaller or let some kids do it for a little bit and then their friend can do um, the rest. So just a couple fun activities. Again, I like butcher paper activities because it gets the kids up and moving and they have to like stretch across the table and use all those arms and shoulder muscles which is always really fun. Okay, now I'm gonna show you my science center and some of the things in the bird science unit, okay? So one thing that's in there is this, birds are, have, eat, and live. This would be fun to do at the end of your unit um, during circle time. Here is a large uh, setup you could do at your science table. I just have it on the ground because um, I have a different one set up I wanted to show you guys. But this is an egg sort and has small, medium, and large. It also has all of these great eggs on it. So you can put this small sorting board at the table. And again, look at all these great pictures. They can measure them. They can use the magnifying glass and look at all of the different eggs. And then let me show you the actual science table. Here's one science table setup. Again, you could do eggs. You could do this build a nest. You could do the other couple ones I'm gonna show you, but I have all these great real photographs and I have them on clothespins. So if the kids wanna take them down or I wanna take them down or use them for circle or the kids wanna look at them, you can pull them off real quick. And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna try and build a nest. So this is great if you, if the Play-Doh nest building was not your jam, try this one. Um, but it has a, all these different nests that all these different birds build in all the different ways. So it's really, really neat. And then I just put out some manipulatives. This is like, these are some fake leaves. I just cut them in pieces, small. These are like a little Jenga game I got from the Dollar Tree. These little rocks are from the Dollar Tree and then some sticks. And then um, <laughs> my, my um, second grader made one <laughs> for me. So we got a little, he made a little nest. And then we also have a magnifying glass so that way they can look at these nests in detail. Um, if you have a real nest, you could totally put that on the science table. And then this is just all of the different birds, um, on there too. And then we have the, they draw it and they can write about it. And again, if you have three-year-olds, they're probably just going to scribble about it. That's okay. That's just take them where they're at. And their writing is just as important, even if it scribbles. And then, so if you want to do that, so what I typically do is I usually do one science table a week. So if you're doing birds for two weeks, you could have this for a week and then pick another one. Or you can do the like the egg one, you could do for small group. This one's kind of bird, not a bird. So they're sorting. So I would put some bird figures over here and then I have all these like other animals and you can put these to the side and the kids can sort them. And all these cards are included so they can sort the figures or the birds. And then you can also put them on like a Velcro page. And then this is a fun fact page. I always put stuff like this in the center. Obviously it's more for the adults to read, but it gives the adults, whoever is with the students in the center, just some background knowledge about birds. And then forgot to put the cubes in there, but they can also measure the different animals. So that's another science table option, bird, not a bird. You could also put the parts of a bird um, page out with this one. Then this one's all about the feathers. So I have these gorgeous, gorgeous feathers. 
and it shows what animal they belong to. So it's basically like I um, magnified and we'll see the feathers up close and the bird, it matches. Duck and the ostrich. And then they can all, you can put out some real feathers and then it also includes printable feathers. So that way they can measure them and look at them and examine them. There's an, so that's another science table idea. So you can do feathers. Oh wait, hold on. There's also these two little fun fact pages about feathers that you can put out at the table too. And then the last science table you could do, and again, you could do this for small group too. It's all the different kinds of beaks. And again, this is the language on here is more for the adult, but you know what? I had to look all this up when I was figuring this out. So it's okay if you have words on your um, science photos because the kids are gonna ask you questions. And if you don't know the answer, it's not a big deal. But if the, um, if the adult or whoever is leading the small group can read it from the page, then that's really helpful that you're giving the kids accurate information. And then all of the different beaks, it'll say um, like this hooked beat, beak, <laughs> it likes to tear and rip meat. It's like a knife and fork or scissors. I did put out Play-Doh scissors, not real scissors. And they can try and pick up the different things with all the different beaks. Obviously this one's like a woodpecker. Um, this one's like another different type of bird. And then, so there you go. So those are just some different science table setups for you guys. So I hope you guys liked all of the bird theme activities for um, a bird theme. <laughs> So I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome night. 